Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be tackling this um, trigonometry sum problem. So we want to find the smallest positive rational number r such that the sum of sines equals the tangent of r degrees. So let's write um, this the sine the, the sum explicitly just to see kind of what what this is. So we see we're summing over essentially multiples of five. Um, in particular, the sum goes from five degrees all the way up to sine of 175 degrees. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate essentially two different ways to solve this problem. Okay. So method one. Method one is essentially we want to um, get some whenever whenever we have some some problem a, a series problem um, we want to basically get it into a series that we know how to deal with so this could be a geometric series arithmetic sequence uh, series um, or a telescoping ser series these are usually the common um, tools so method one is essentially going to be trying to get this to sum to a telescope. So what we're going to do is use the sum to product formula. In particular, we're going to be using that the sine of A times the cosine of B is equal to the sine of A plus B minus the sine of a minus b all over 2. Okay. Uh, sorry, this is plus, not minus. There we go. Okay. So how are we going to use this? Well, what we're going to do is, so I've, as you can see, I've denoted this sum uh, of the sine values by the letter s. So what we're going to do is multiply s times the cosine of 5 degrees so that we have sine of 5 degrees, cosine of 5 degrees, plus sine of 10 degrees times the cosine of 5 degrees, and so on. And we're going to apply this product to some formula to each of these terms. Okay. So using this sine A times cosine B formula. Okay. And so if we write this out, right, we get sine for the first term, we get sine of 10 degrees plus sine of zero degrees all over two, then plus sine of 15 degrees plus sine of five sorry, sine of uh, 10, yeah, sine of 5 degrees over 2, and so on, up until we get sine of 180 degrees plus um, sine of 170 degrees. So this doesn't really telescope in a sense, but you'll see um, that we get some, some nice effect. Essentially, um, I think there's a way to properly make this telescope in a way, but um, this is still manageable. So the sine of 0 and sine of 180 are both equal to 0, so we can just ignore those terms. And then we can look at the series basically um, in the first term and then in the second term. So in the first terms we have sine of 10 degrees plus sine of 15 degrees all the way up to sine of 175 degrees. This is all over 2. And then we look at the um, sum over the uh, second term. So we have, we start with sine of 5 degrees, and we go all the way up to sine of 170 degrees over here. 
and so we see that there is a common um, there's a common expression here, uh, namely sine uh, the the sum of the multiples of five from ten to one seventy. Since we're adding those up uh, over two, then we just get that, right? And the leftover terms are sine of five degrees plus sine of 175 degrees. Um, but as we know, the sine of 180 minus x is equal to the sine of x. So this is actually just equal to sine of 5 degrees. So what we get is that s times the cosine of 5 degrees is equal to sine of 5 degrees plus sine of 10 degrees plus so on up to 170 degrees. And this is actually s minus sine of 175 degrees. Or equivalently, we know that this is s minus sine of 5 degrees, right? So now we have basically just an equation for s, and we can solve s equals um, s equals sine of 5 degrees over 1 minus cosine of 5 degrees. Okay. And now we want this to be in the form of a tangent. Okay. And it turns out that, well, there is an expression uh, which is the half angle identity. Well, there are several half angle identities for the tangent, but one of them happens to look like this, which looks mighty similar to what we have over here, right? So we can see that the tangent of 2.5 degrees would be 1 minus cosine of 5 degrees over the sine of 5 degrees, which is 1 over s. Um, so that means S we can express as a um, as a cotangent, right? So we get S is the uh, cotangent of 2.5 degrees. But we also know that cota uh, the cotangent of X is equal to tangent of 90 degrees minus X. And so that, that gives us that this is tangent of 87.5 degrees. And so our answer is R equals 87.5. Uh, you can kind of see that, well, in the principal range of the tangent, namely from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees, um, the tangent is one to one, right? which means if we have some solution here, which is um, 87.5, and this is equal to S, uh, that is the only solution in this range. Um, so this is the smallest positive, positive value. Okay, so that concludes method two. Sorry, method one. So method two is uh, going to be a similar or not a similar approach, but again, we want to turn series into things we know how to deal with. And namely, these are going to be geometric series, arithmetic series, or uh, telescoping series. And so to get a geometric series out of this, we can realize that, well, exponentials have a very nice, uh, Whenever we sum exponentials, right? These are, well, these are geometric series, and we know by Euler's formula that e to the i x is cosine x plus i sine x, and in particular, this means sine x is equal to the imaginary part of e to the i x. So this sum. 
the sum of sine values you can actually see is the imaginary part of a sum of exponentials, uh, namely e to the i 5k degrees. And really the degree symbol here would be kind of like pi, uh, pi over 180, if you would. Um, but I'm just going to stick to, to writing degrees. So basically, we can calculate this, uh, this sum, because it's a geometric series, and then take its imaginary value to, or imaginary part, to get what s is. Okay. So writing this out explicitly, we have e to the i 5 degrees plus dot 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 plus e to the i 175 degrees, uh, which is, of course, what we would expect. And we can evaluate this as a geometric sum. Um, we get the first term, e to the i 5 degrees, times e to the i um, 5 times the number of terms, which would be 35. So 175 degrees minus 1, all divided by e to the i 5 degrees minus 1. I believe this is correct. And um, so what we can notice is, well, if we multiply this through, um, we get e to the i 180 degrees, which is um, the same thing as e to the i pi, which we know famously is equal to negative 1. So this is minus 1 minus e to the i 5 degrees over e to the i 5 degrees minus 1. Now we need to get an imaginary part out of this. Uh, so how are we going to do that? Um, well... We can multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, uh, which is we replace every i by a negative i. So that will look like this. Okay. Uh, now we have to do a little bit of algebra. So we have negative e to the i over e to the negative i 5 degrees um, plus 1 minus 1, which comes from this product of the exponentials, you'll get negative e to the i 0, which is 1. So we're, you know, e to the i 0 is 1, so minus 1. And then plus e to the i 5 degrees. Okay, so these cancel out. Um, we get... 1 minus e to the i 5 degrees minus e to the negative i 5 degrees plus 1. So this is e to the i 5 degrees minus e to the i 5, e to the minus i 5 degrees over 2 plus 2 minus e to the i 5 degrees plus e to the minus i 5 degrees. Okay. Now we again can use Euler's formula to figure out what these um, what these things actually mean. Okay. In particular, e to the i x minus e to the negative i x. Well, we know e to the i x is cosine x plus i sine x. And e to the minus i x is just the conjugate of this. So the cosines cancel out, and we get 2i sine x. 
then <clears throat> similarly in the denominator we have this e to the ix plus e to the minus ix uh, again and this is kind of uh, a general result for when you add or subtract the conjugate of a complex number to itself the i sine x terms cancel out and we get 2 cosine x so what we have is that this sum here is equal to 2i sine 5 degrees over 2 minus 2 cosine of 5 degrees. Okay, So the 2's cancel out here, which is nice. Um, so we have i times sine of 5 degrees over 1 minus cosine of 5 degrees. And so the imaginary part of this okay, which is the imaginary part of this, well, we can see that this is a purely imaginary number, so the imaginary part is just this part, sine of 5 degrees over 1 minus cosine of 5 degrees, which is the exact same expression we got last time, uh, which of course Whenever we do something in two different ways and we get the same result, uh, that's very reassuring that we're doing something right. And so we can again use the same trick to show that this is tan of 87.5 degrees. So again, showing that R is 87.5. And if you have any other methods to solve this problem, please let me know. Um, I'd, be, I'd be happy to... Uh, see what you guys think. So anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.